The US helmets of the Second World War are some of the most iconic in military history. With all the photographs and footage of the conflict, have you ever noticed some of these had markings and symbols on their sides? Airborne units, particularly the 101st Airborne Division, used these markings for the planned invasion of France. But what exactly were they for and how many types were there? In today's video, we'll talk about the airborne symbols on US helmets during World War II. If you enjoy this video and want to see more, hit that subscribe button. It's free and really helps the channel reach more history lovers like you. Symbols on helmets weren't specific to airborne units. Rank markings were generally painted on helmets of army officers to allow for quick recognition in the field. Additionally, NCOs had the same, with a white horizontal stripe painted on the back. Other units, such as military police and medical units, had requisite symbols to denote their roles. But when it comes to the 101st Airborne Division, they had a whole range of different signs and symbols on their helmets. The purpose of this was to allow a method for the men to quickly identify their units as soon as they landed. Unlike the 82nd Airborne Division, the 101st was yet to take part in the war, so D-Day would be their first test. About two weeks prior to the invasion, a staff conference was held, where the idea of utilising markings was agreed upon. The four symbols from a deck of playing cards, as well as other geometric and simple shapes, were to be used. General Maxwell Taylor, the division commander, signed off on the idea, and it was immediately implemented. The symbols were one and three quarter inches, and painted in white on either side of the helmet. For infantry and glider units, a white dash was painted around the symbol to indicate each particular battalion. Above the symbol for their unit headquarters, to the right for 1st Battalion, underneath for 2nd Battalion, and to the left for 3rd Battalion. Starting with the infantry units, the 501st Parachute Infantry Regiment had a diamond. The 502nd Parachute Infantry Regiment had a heart symbol. The 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment had a spade. The 327th Glider Infantry Regiment rounded out the playing card symbols with clubs. The division's artillery units had a circle, with the headquarters of the artillery featuring a dash above the circle. A dash to the right of the circle was reserved for the 321st Glider Field Artillery Battalion. A dash below the circle was painted on the helmets of the 377th Parachute Field Artillery Battalion. Finally, the 907th Glider Field Artillery Battalion had a dash to the left of the circle. The 81st Airborne Anti-Aircraft Battalion featured a triangle. The 326th Engineer Battalion featured a large E painted on either side. The 326th Medical Company had a white cross, which is most often associated with medical corps. The headquarters of the division and its subunits featured a white square. A dash above the square represented the reconnaissance platoon. A dash to the right of the square was for the 101st Signal Company. A dash below the square represented the 426th Quartermaster Company. And finally, a dash to the left of the square was for the 801st Ordnance Company. The 101st weren't completely alone when it comes to these painted symbols, as some elements of the 82nd Airborne Division also painted them on their helmets. The headquarters company of the 508th Parachute Infantry Regiment had two letter H's side by side painted in red. 3rd Battalion of the 508th had a white coloured winged foot painted on either side. Finally, a battalion of the 507th Parachute Infantry Regiment had a white Diablo shape. Overall, the use of the symbols were quite successful in combat. They allowed the paratroopers to recognise their fellow soldiers quickly, and overall this success lasted throughout the war. In the end, these symbols were a great simple idea to assist the 101st Airborne Division during World War II. Did you know what the symbols on helmets meant? Did you realise there were so many? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below. 
As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to expand your knowledge and join the growing Premier History community.